This video explains how to combine several columns of a data frame to remove NA values using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with the lines two to six of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data set called data is appearing at the top right. And if you click on this data frame, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data frame contains six rows and five columns, whereby the columns x1, x2, and x3 contain NA values. Now, let's assume that we want to combine these three columns into one column where the NA values are removed. Then we can apply the code that you can see in lines 8 to 12. So in line 8 of the code, I'm specifying the columns that I want to combine. So in this case, I want to combine the columns x1, x2, and x3. So after running this line of code, a new data object called call combine is created. And this data object simply contains the three names of the columns that I want to combine. And then in the next step, in lines 11 and 12 of the code, I'm using the C bind, the NA omit, the unlist, and the call names functions to combine our columns. This code is kind of complicated, so for that reason, you will find all the code in the description of this video. However, I'm storing the output of this code in a new data frame object that I'm calling data new one. So after running these lines of code, you can see that this new data object is appearing at the top right. And if you click on it, you can see that we have created a new data frame. And this data frame contains only the columns X, Y, and C. And the column X contains the values in our three input columns, X1, X2, and X3, and the NA values have been dropped. So in this first example, I have explained how to use the functions of the basic installation of the R programming language to combine our columns. However, it's also possible to use the dplyr and Perl packages for this task. And in order to do that, we first need to install and load the packages, as you can see in lines 14 to 18 of the code. I have installed both packages already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load them with line 15 and line 18 of the code. And after running these lines of code, we can apply the functions of these packages, as you can see in lines 20 to 21. So after running these lines of code, another data set called data new2 is appearing at the top right. And if you click on this data set, you can see that we have created a data set containing exactly the same values as in the previous example. However, this time we have used the functions of the dplyr and per packages instead of base r. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.